Welcome. In this video, we'll be going over Likode 739, Daily Temperatures. Here's the problem on Likode, and the description says, Given a list of daily temperatures T, return a list such that, for each day in input, tells you how many days you would have to wait until a warmer temperature. If there is no future day for which this is possible, put a zero instead. Now I'm going to switch over to draw.io now. And here you can see I replicated the given example. Each box over here represents a given day. And as you can see, there are eight days. Now note that I indicated the first day with a zero. This is because I want to align with the zero index array. So what the lead code question is asking of you is to indicate for each day how many days it will take until it reaches a warmer day. For example, on day zero, which has a temperature of 73, it will only take one day until it reaches a warmer day, and that is because the next day has a temperature of 74. Therefore, the first entry in the result array is one. Likewise, for day one, not day zero, it will only take one day until it reaches a warmer day. That is because the next day, with a temperature of 75, is warmer than the current day, which is the day with the temperature of 74. Therefore, we also put a one in this entry. Now for day two, it will actually take four days until it reaches a warmer day. That is because the temperature of 75 is warmer than the next three days. It's warmer than 71, 69, and 72. The next warmer day occurs on day six, which has a temperature of 76. Therefore, the entry on this day is four. One, two, three, four. Day six minus day two is four. So now you probably get the picture. So the simple brute force solution would be the typical quadratic double for loop algorithm, which takes each outer loop iteration and does a scan over the rest of the array to find a greater temperature. For example, if you start on day zero, you might, you might scan through the whole array until you find a greater temperature. And then, if you, and then once you find a greater temperature, you can iterate through the array and then once again, scan through the whole array again until you find a greater temperature. Rinse and repeat until you reach the end of the array. Now, this would work with smaller inputs just fine, but with larger inputs with hundreds or even thousands of days, this would be extremely inefficient. So we should find a better solution. Now, the difficulty in this problem is not knowing how far ahead the next warmer day is. If the next warmer day is at the very end of the array, then we'll have to travel all the way towards the end of the array, and then on the next iteration, start over again. If we keep traveling back and forth like this, it can be quite expensive. So a better solution here would be to actually start at the very end of the array and work backwards. If we start at the very end of the array, we know ahead of time all the warmer days. Thus, we can create an algorithm with linear time complexity. So if we start at the very end of the array, how can we store data such that it can be used to determine the next warmer day? Well, in our solution, I propose we use a stack. This thing right here. A stack abides by the first in last out principle, or inversely, last in first out. Now, why is this useful? Because on each iteration starting backwards, the last item that we placed on the stack represents the next day. And if that next day isn't a warmer day, we can simply use the pop method until we find a warmer day if it exists. Now, it'll be easier to comprehend by visual example rather than by just simply words. It's part of the reason why I make these kinds of videos. You can develop a better intuition if you can map things out visually in your brain. So let's begin the operation. On day seven, which is the last day, there is no next warmer day. So we can simply push it onto the stack and leave the corresponding entry in the result array as zero. So I'll push it onto the stack like so. And then now we'll continue the iteration. So I'll move the pointer like so. And now we're on day six. On day six, we see that there is an item on top of the stack. We can use this item on top of the stack to compare it with the current day. Since the temperature of the day on top of the stack is colder than the current day, we can pop that item off the stack. That day is not a warmer day. Therefore, since the stack is empty, we can determine that there is no next warmer day. So we'll leave the corresponding entry in day six as zero. 
And now we can push this item onto the stack. Now let's continue the iteration by moving the pointer. Okay, and now we're on day five. On day five, we see that the temperature of the item on top of the stack is warmer than the current day. Therefore, this day is the next warmer day. To calculate the distance, we can simply subtract the index of the next warmer day by the index of the current day. In this case, day six minus day five is one. Therefore, we can place one in the entry. And now I'll push the current day onto the stack and continue the iteration. And that leaves us at day four. Now on day four, we yet again see that the item on top of the stack is warmer than the current day. 72 is warmer than 69. To calculate the distance, we again take the index, which is day five, and subtract it by day four. And that gives us one. So we place one in the entry because it only took one day until the next warmer day. And then now we can simply push this item onto the stack and move the pointer. On day three, we see that the item on top of the stack is actually colder than the current day. 69 is colder than 71. That means that the item on top of the stack is not the next warmer day. Therefore, we can simply pop that item off, off the stack by deleting it. And now, since there are still items in the stack, we can continue the comparison. Now, the item on top of the stack is warmer than the current day. Therefore, this item is the next warmer day. To calculate the distance, you take the index on top of the stack, which is day five, and subtract it by the index of the current day, which is day three. Now, that'll give us two days. So we mark two days in the corresponding entry. Now, great. So as always, I'll push the current item onto the stack and continue the iteration by moving the pointer. Now on day two, we see that the item on top of the stack is 71, which is colder than the current day, which has a temperature of 75. Therefore, we can simply pop it off and continue the comparison. Now you'll notice the temperature on top of the stack is actually still colder than the temperature of the current day. Therefore, we can pop that off as well. Now, since there are still items on the stack, yet again, we can continue the comparison. In this case, 76 is actually warmer than 75. Therefore, this day is warmer than this day. To calculate the distance between these two days, simply subtract the index of the item on top of the stack, which is day six, by the index of the current day, which is day two. Six minus two is four. Therefore, it'll take four days from this point to reach a next warmer day. Now, like always, we'll push the current day onto the stack. And now we continue the iteration by moving the pointer. On day one, we see that the item on top of the stack is warmer. So we can simply repeat the process. We subtract the difference, which is day two minus day one, and we put that in the entry. And then we can simply push that item onto the stack and then move to the next day. Rinse and repeat. On day zero, we see that again, the item on top of the stack is warmer than the current day. So we can calculate the distance by calculating day one minus day zero, which gives us one. We can simply put one in the entry and then pop the item, push the item on top of the stack. And there you go. At this point, we've reached the end of the array. Okay, so now we're finally done. I encourage you to implement this conceptual solution and to give it a good shot. Otherwise, I'll be switching over onto my code editor now. Now, as you can see here, I replicated to give an example. T equals 73, 74, 75, 71, 69, 72, 76, and 73. I'll start by creating an error function called daily temperatures. And in this case, it'll take in a parameter called T, which is a number array. And as a return value, it'll also expect a number array like so. So let's instantiate our data structures. The first one will be the result array initialized with zeros. In this case, let result equals new array. And this will have a size of t.length. 
and we're going to fill it with all zeros. Now the next data structure is going to be our stack. So let's stack equal empty array. Now in JavaScript and by extension TypeScript, we can use normal arrays to behave as stacks. When we push something onto the array, it will be pushed at the very end of that array, which for our purposes is identical to pushing something on top of the stack. If we pop something from an array, it will remove that last item from the array, which again, for our purposes, means it will remove the topmost item from the stack. Now you'll see an error here, and that's because it's expecting a return value. I'll simply return the result. Okay, so let's talk about the stack for a moment. Since I'm using TypeScript, I'll create a tuple data type, which I'll call temp and index. So type, temp and index is equal to number and number. And the stack will be an array of these tuples. So temp and index array. Now, if you're a little confused by that, let me explain. I'll go back to draw.io and I'll go over here real quick. You see on our stack, we have not only the temperature of the day, but we also have the index. And that's what temp and index is. Every item on the stack is actually going to be an array of two numbers. The first entry of the, of the array is going to be the temperature. And the second number is going to be the index. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my code editor now. Now, as you can see here, the stack is going to be an array and every item within the array is going to be a type temp and index which is also an array, but in this case, it will be an array of two values. The first value will be a temperature and the second value would be the index. Okay, so let's set up the for loop. Remember, we're starting at the very end of the array. This means that we'll initialize our starting index at t.length minus one. So for let i equals t.length minus one. We subtract t.length by one because the first element of the array starts at zero while the length does not. Now, since we're starting at the very end of the array, we're going to continue until we reach the beginning of the array. In this case, i will be true as long as it is greater than or equal to zero. Now to traverse from the end of the array, we simply type i minus minus. All right, so let's write the core logic here. Now remember, we start the iteration by always comparing the current day with the topmost item on the stack. If the topmost item on the stack is colder than the current day, that means that it's not the next warmer day. Therefore, we pop it off the stack and we continue comparing and popping until we find a next warmer day. So to write this logic, I'll start by typing while stack.length. Now, stack.length will return a zero if it's empty. Otherwise, it will return some arbitrary number, which will pass the condition. And if we determine that the stack is not empty, we must now compare the temperature of the current day to the temperature of the item on top of the stack. And I'll write that by typing and t of i, which is the, the temperature of the current day, is greater than or equal to stack, stack.length minus one and zero. Now, if you're confused as to what that means, let me break it down for you. The stack is obviously the stack containing all of the next days. We use the brackets containing stack.length minus one to indicate the topmost item of the stack. We use the zero to indicate the temperature of the last item on the stack. Now remember, every item on the stack is two numbers within an array. The first number of that item is the temperature. The second item is the index. So when, when we write stack, stack.length minus one, and then zero, you're basically getting the temperature of the topmost item on the stack. Now notice that I'm using the greater than or equal to operator here. This means that if the current temperature is warmer or equal to than the temperature on top of the stack, we remove that item on the top of the stack by using stack.pop. Now also notice that I'm using a while loop here. We want to keep removing the topmost item of the stack until we find if a warmer day exists. If there is no next warmer day, then the stack becomes empty. In that case, we exit this while loop. 
Outside of that while loop, I'll create another conditional branch by typing if stack.length and current temperature is less than stack stack.length minus one and zero. Now notice in this case, I'm checking if the temperature of the current day is less than the temperature of the day on top of the stack. If the temperature of the current day is strictly less than the temperature of the day on top of the stack, that means the item on top of the stack is a warmer day. Now to calculate the distance of days between the current day and the day on top of the stack, we simply subtract the day on top of the stack by the current day. We can use bracket notation one to indicate the index of the day. And we can do that by coding cons distance equals stack stack that length minus one one minus i. Now this piece of code here indicates the item on top of the stack. And this one here indicates the second number within that item. Remember that every item in the stack is a tuple consisting of two numbers. The first number is the temperature and the second number is the index of that day. So by typing a one here, I am essentially grabbing the index of the day on top of the stack. And I'm subtracting i here because i is currently representing the current day. So once I have the distance, I can simply insert that into the result array. And I'll do that by typing result current day equals distance. And if you really wanted to, you can create a one liner out of this by taking this and inserting it here, like so. Now bear in mind that if we fail this conditional statement, that means that there is no next warmer day. And if that's the case, we can simply leave the entry in the result array as zero. So now after all of that logic, we always have to push the current day onto the stack. And we can do that by typing stack.push and the entry will be a tuple, which in this case is going to be an array of two numbers. And the first number is going to be the temperature, which is T of I. And the second number is going to be the index of that day, which is going to be I. Now to check the result, I print the return value of this function. And I'll do this by passing daily temperatures T into this print array function. I'll type in daily temperatures, passed in with a T. And if I save that, you can see in my console that I have the results array. And lo and behold, it is the correct array. So let's check this on leak code. I'm going to grab this body here, switch over to leak code, and then paste this in and submit. Okay, great, and it works. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you find this useful. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you very much.